Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 494, we are going to talk about Nahiri the Lithomancer. Now this was uh, the cycle uh, several years ago, it was at monocolor decks, uh, I want to say it was 14, 15, somewhere thereabouts. But Nahiri the Lithomancer is a planeswalker that can be your commander, 5 mana, 3 loyalty. Plus two, you get a core soldier to a 1-1 one, one core soldier token on the battlefield, and you can attach an equipment you control to it. So that's that's pretty good. Minus two, you may put an equipment card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. Now that, that helps out a bunch. Now, for minus ten, you put a colorless equipment artifact token named stone forge blade onto the battlefield it has indestructible equipped creature gets plus five plus five and double strike and of course equip zero that actually that uh, equipment looks like this I uh, I love the fact that they got the same artist to do both arts because that was you know that was kind of a nice touch so Got them both signed. Because y'all know I'm an autograph hound. So let's look. Obviously, this is an equipment deck. Um, it's kind of White's way to interact with artifacts. Uh, so, as usual, I think we will look at our mana first. We have a Wayfarer's Bauble, a Marble Diamond, a couple of... Mirror, you know, Palladium Mirror, Gold Mirror, and Plague Mirror. Now, Plague Mirror does kind of do double duty. Yeah, it's a uh, a mana accelerant early on, but, you know, later on, if you can strap it up with enough stuff, it can get pretty dangerous. Uh, Heraldic Banner, because, you know, another plus one never hurts. Oresco's Explorer, and the Explorer's Scope. Now, uh, card draw, uh, Tower of Fortunes, but I want to I wanna look at Candles of, of Lang here for a minute. Because Candles of Lang, yeah, two to cast, four to use, four and tap. Reveal the top card of your library. If it has the same name as a card in your graveyard, put it in your graveyard. Otherwise, draw a card. In Commander, this is exceptionally a lot better than it is in 60 card because there's, beyond basic land, there's zero chance of that happening unless you're running one of those four or five cards that you can have multiple copies of, but it's white, so we're not doing that here. So, yeah, it is four mana to draw one card. Two to cast, so this is a little bit better than a Jam Day Tome. It, it is repeatable. Um... I don't know. We're going to give it a try. So let's look at creatures. Okay. Now there are a huge suite of creatures that deal with uh, equipment. Um, I, I'm blanking on names right now. The one where you get to equip stuff for free, that's awesome. I don't have it in here. I just don't have it. But I want to start off with Kimba. Now, it's been a long time since I've actually done the Kimba deck. Y'all remember it, I'm sure. Uh, she just makes a whole lot of cat tokens. Raksha, the Golden Cub. Uh, this is, I mean, 7 mana 3 4, but it has Vigilance, and when he's equipped, your cats get plus 2, plus 2, and have double strike. Uh, it says cats you control. He's a cat. It doesn't say others, so he gets, you know. Plus two, plus two, and double strike as well. Uh, Kimba's Legion you can block an additional creature for each equipment on it. So that, you know, that works. Um, uh, Skyhunter Skirmisher, just because it has flying and double strike, those are, that is well worth the three mana one one investment because let's face it, it's not going to be swinging for the one. 
Danith of Compassion. You know, make sure e equipment costs less. And, and, you know, First Strike Vigilance Lifelink's not bad either. Heavenly Blade Master, flying a double strike when he enters the battlefield. You can detach, you know, just any number of equipment to it. But then other creatures you control get 1-1 one, one for each equipment on her. So, yeah, that's really strong. Um, Locks on Punisher, similar. It doesn't have the flying, but, you know, it gets plus 2, plus 2 for each equipment on it. Mirror Adapter gets 1-1, one, one, and, you know, it's cheap enough at 3, right? Uh, Stonehaven Outfitter. Just... It anthems your equipped creatures, but when they die, you get to draw cards. So that's that's one <laughs> the one sure thing is that uh, they're going to want to kill your guys. Sun Spear Shikari. Now <clears throat> another cat, and it's going to have first strike and life link as long as you got something strapped up to it. Arak Edge right has Metal Craft. Uh, this is just a two mana double strike. Because we are more than likely going to have Metalcraft. The new Novice Knight from him. Well, it's still new. I, I haven't put it in a deck till now. But 2 3 for 1 with Defender. <clears throat> but once you give this young knight a sword, he knows how to fight. Uh, the Fencing Ace, there again, it's just a 2 mana for a double strike. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Healer's Hawk, uh, Flying in Lifelink for one. Sky Hunter, it's flying, but it's also a cat that helps out a bunch. The Brass Squire, you can tap it to just attach equipment you control to target creature you, you control. So that gets around the uh, pretty exorbitant equipment costs sometimes. Now, Soltari Foot Soldier may be a little you know, cheaty face sounding, because, you know, let's face it, it ain't getting blocked, right? And that's why. And our last creature is Spectral Guardian. As long as it's untapped, non-creature artifacts cannot be the target of spells or effects, so that's real good. But you just don't see the Spectral Guardian in play a lot in a lot of decks. So let's, let's look at our equipment, shall we? Now, uh, just a preface here, we're not going to find Sword of X and Y because those are all amazing. If you got them, run them by all means. Uh, and there are, this is a very, I don't know, different suite of equipment here. You know it's in here, so the, the Colossus Hammer, you know, yeah, it's going to lose flying because let's face it, that's a big old hammer. But plus 10, plus 10 is mighty nice. Argentum Armor, plus 6, plus 6. And, um, you know, Attack, Trigger, Vindicate, I'll take it. Bone Horde is one that I don't think gets a lot of play in equipment decks. Mainly because um, Equip Creature gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all the graveyards. Now, we have a few board wipe abilities because we don't have as many creatures as probably the rest of the table is going to have. But that number can get very large the longer the game goes on. So, um, of course, the equipment that started it all, Bone Splitter, at a rate that's just way too good. And then even the Dark Steel Axe, which is only slightly more, but it's still indestructible. Uh, Fire Shrieker to give it double strike. Black Blade Reforge, because why not? Uh, I, I mean, just... Now, granted, the Black Blade here is going to probably rely heavy on those uh, free-to-equip cars that we're running. Um, it does have Equip Legend 3, and we've got a few Legends. Obviously, we can't strap it up to our commander, but uh, Rogue's Gloves, kind of a, a card draw in there. Uh, Moon Silver Spear. You know, I like making 4 4 Angels. <laughs> Sigil of Valor for each other creature. 
Sigil Sword of Valeron. Just make some knights. Ring of Thune. Because sometimes Ring of Thune is, I'll admit, probably the weakest of all of them. Um, as I get more and better, this will probably get replaced. Brawler's Plate. I like that it gives trample. And Angelic Armaments. Just turn it, whatever it's equipping into an angel. So, uh, let's look at, you know, obviously we're running Sigarda's Aid. Because we want them to have flash and we want free equip. So, why not? Um, Hannah's Custody. J j just to blank. Artifacts have Shroud. Deal with it. Uh, Norn's Annex. Ritual of Restoration. Maybe get something back. We are... Frantic Salvage. You know. And it says draw cards, so why not? We're playing Mono White, so that means things like Armored Ascension and Reconnaissance. Uh, True Conviction works really good. Double Strike and Lifelink. Now, White Sun Zenith is in there. Um, it's a late game bomb. I mean, it, it, it creates a ton of cats. It's instant speed, so you can do it before it's your turn, so they're not sick on your turn. And it makes cats. So that right there in and of itself, uh, you know, Raksha approves. Now let's look at some removal. Uh, Ravnica at War. I, I, I just, I'm loving this in Mono White. Yeah, it may not get much, but you know what? It ain't getting nothing of ours. Uh, Meteor Golem. It's just a 187 creature. And hey, it's on the board, it's an artifact, so it kind of helps for your metalcraft things. Uh, it helps for just having a creature to strap something to. Um, you know, uh, Oblation, Tempest of Light, Instant Speed, Tranquility, Disenchant, Love Me Some Afterlife. You don't see Destroy Target Creature on white cards that much. Um, Planar Outburst. Enlightened Ascetic, you know, just kills an enchantment. Pacifism. Wave of Reckoning. And Cataclysm. Now, Cataclysm is kind of a different animal here. Uh, you're, everybody's going to keep an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a land. So everybody keeps four cards and just sacks the rest. Well, if we've got, you know, the big creature with the hammer of I kill you quickly, um, and maybe the, uh, uh, the true conviction, I don't care what anybody else has. <laughs> so, eh... It can level the board at a time where you equal is not exactly equal, where our quality is kind of better. So let's look at some non-basic lands. Running the Ancient Den to kind of help out with the Metalcraft thing. Some Cycle Lands and Drifting Meadow. Desert of the True. Secluded Step. I'm not real scared to run non-basics in this. I mean, obviously. Um, New Benalia. Let's a scry. Gargoyle Castle uh, can just, you know, invent a 3-4 flyer out of nowhere. Castle Ardenvale is a good mana sink to get blockers or, you know, just more things to attack with. Foundry of the Council, same thing, but these fly. Rogue's Passage, because that's fair and balanced in an equipment deck. And lastly, the Remote Farm. Now, the Mercadian Mass cycle of common lands here the depletion lands, yeah, you only get two uses out of them. But they're two mana a pop every time you use it. So, um, now these are really good with uh, your uh, your proliferate decks and things like that. Uh, but um, obviously this is not one of those. But that is what we have got for... Oh, she's sliding. Oh.
new sleeves. What sleeve is this? Uh, Future Comics, I believe, is what that is. I'm not sure. Bought a case of those a while back. Um, just about, just about done with those. Um, the purple ones I, I've been on for quite a while. That was the the next case I bought, and I've there aren't that many of those left either. What is your couple dozen decks in the purple? But anyway, that is what we have got for the theory. Let's give the stone blade. That's probably the real commander, right? I mean, uh, Nahiri is done. Now, do, 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 do. oh, I'm showing the Pepsi logo. Uh, 494 is done. Now, I know we are, um, deck number 500 is coming up. I'm really super excited about it. And it's super obvious what I'm doing. Yes, I am delaying because I'm trying to get the cards in, trying to get that deck built right before I show it to y'all. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing there. You know, I know. But uh, I do like the, you know, every day through the month of October, Decktober, whatnot. I've probably built more decks this month than I have any other month. But I do appreciate y'all watching. Um... Y'all let me know what you think, but right now, we're going to shuffle and cut.